Well, well, you would have seen the police minister now outside the home of Ndlantlalax. You'll remember that earlier on he tweeted that his house was petrol bombed. Um, so the police minister visiting the home being taken, of course, into the scene. A few moments ago, in fact, uh, you know, this particular place or his home had been barricaded and people were prevented, of course, from coming in, as you can imagine. This is a, a crime scene. So uh, members of the public, of course, are being prevented from entering or coming anywhere uh, close to the home. I'm going to bring you closer uh, to this particular area where we'll get a sense of what it's looking like. So this is, you know, the set uh, a place uh, where indeed uh, the minister uh, was uh, or rather where the petrol bomb uh, happened so the minister now inside uh, some of the neighbors uh, here you will see uh, that investigators as well um, you know were on scene the gentlemen that you see on your screen right now have been combing through the scene trying to get uh, you know uh, clues in terms of where this could have come from we managed to speak to a couple of uh, neighbors who wouldn't come on camera but were telling us about what they heard earlier on. One lady saying that she wasn't home. In fact, her children uh, were home and that, um, you know, what they heard was quite uh, traumatic. The bang that they speak of was quite traumatic. If you see and take a look at, um, you know, this home and the windows on the ground, you know, it's clear that this impact was quite severe. I mean, if you look at the glass on the ground, if you look at the windows um, themselves, clearly they tell a story of, of course, something that um, was quite devastating. Neighbors saying that they're traumatized, their children are traumatized. So we'll be getting then a view from the minister in terms of what exactly um, you know his team on the ground is telling him um, what the motive behind this has been we know that he's been out throughout the night trying to um, stop uh, you know those who are barricading roads um, as part of that particular uh, national shutdown so we'll be hearing from the minister at a later stage then when he comes out what he will give members of the media in terms of what uh, his team has found. Linda Mnissi, for those viewers who are getting this information from you for the first time, uh, just give the viewers an update as to when exactly this petrol bombing uh, happened, uh, but also the targeting of uh, Ndlandla Lux's home. Uh, could it possibly be part and parcel of him having been seen with police officers uh, many moons ago when he was leading uh, the so-called Operation Dudula, basically the, the close relationship he has had uh, with the police. Could that have possibly made him a target somewhat? In fact, in the tweet that he sent out about four hours ago, what he says there is that he, they beat uh, the EFF at their own game on the streets of Soweto by defending the township brilliantly with all the law enforcement on their side. So from what the street says, it's clear that then, uh, you know, he's pointing fingers at the EFF because he goes on to say in the very same tweet that they, they bomb and kill my entire family because they lost. So he views this. Um, clearly as a victory uh, against uh, the economic freedom fighters. So um, that's how he views at this very moment uh, what has happened at his home. We know he's been out uh, throughout the night trying to defend quite similar scenes. In fact, if you remember quite correctly uh, from the July Andres when you would have seen uh, members of um, you know the Operation Dudula as well as some of uh, the members that are associated with him uh, protecting um, you know property in Soweto particularly uh, Maponya Mall that is in, in fact how 
a lot of South Africans were introduced to Ntlantlalak. So at this very moment then, um, you know, he was part of the people who were out and against the national shutdown, working closely with members of the SAPS. So we'll be getting some word from him. In fact, he's been around uh, here interacting with the investigators who have been on the ground. Kole. Linda Mnisil, let's leave it there for the time being. Uh, live for us in Soweto at the home and uh, indeed the neighbours of Ndandalax. You've heard uh, Linda there recounting what the neighbours say uh, they experienced, talking about children being traumatised. Hopefully we're going to get that interaction between the reporters and Ndandalax himself. Still to come.